Friend to Rokana, what he makes of that, the California Democratic Congressman, kind enough to join us. Congressman, good to see you again. Um, is it out this year? Is it not going to happen this year? Neil, I don't think it'll happen this year, but we need to get it done. We need to have a vote on it one way or the other. Let's have the vote in January uh, and let's move on. I think if we bring a vote, there's a good chance that people will vote yes when it's actually on the floor. All right. Uh, in the Senate, that means that uh, Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema would vote for it. Or you're confident they would. They don't seem of that mindset now, but force with the issue, you think they would? I'm not confident. I mean, obviously, it's up to them, but I think if the president comes out and says, look, this is the agreement I had, this was the framework, I looked people in the eye and I got the House to vote for it and I had 50 senators, I need to do this to lower health care costs, lower prescription drug costs, lower child care costs, I think there's a good chance. He needs to make the case we need to have a vote, uh, and that's, I think, the way forward. All right. Um, there are a lot of people who look at that and say, uh, even within your own party, sir, they hope it never comes to fruition because uh, the, the popular support right now uh, isn't there. And then that what is there is co growing concern about inflation and what appears to be the inability of the administration to do anything about it. What do you say? There's a lot of popular support for the policies. I mean, people want prescription drugs costs go down. That would tackle inflation. People want to have child care costs go down. People want to make sure that they have assistance with rent, where rent is going up. So I, I actually think this puts more money in the working class. there are more people class. paying for that than getting anything out of that, right? Isn't that the essence of inflation? No, I mean, I, I think this bill, you're right, is paid for, and that's why it won't have an inflationary pressure. You're not going to have more Treasury bonds but, but at the it, but Fed. But it, it isn't paid for, right? It, it is paid for. I mean, it is paid for by a tax on people making over $10 million. It's paid for by making but, sure but it corporations. But right? Even allowing for that, Congressman, it's about $367 billion shy in revenues over 10 years. Now, that could change. But conversely, if some of its more popular features, uh, when the CBO was asked to crunch the numbers, if they weren't phased out in one, two, or three years, as many of them are, um, this is actually going to be a $5 trillion measure, not a $2 trillion measure. What do you say? But you can't do a hypothetical and do something that the Republicans aren't supporting. I mean, it's a one-year bill. That's like saying, why, why don't we have a 10-year score uh, for a defense budget? I mean, we, this is for a one-year bill, and the CBO has scored it properly. Now, there but is, is a, a different— legitimate question, right, sir? I mean, I mean, you're quite right. We've done this in Republican administrations as well. But if, if you're talking about very popular programs and you say that some of these features are quite popular, what Congress would let them phase out in one, two, or three years? So what What's wrong with asking the CBO, just in case a Congress doesn't do that, um, what are we left with? And that's what the, the CBO came up with. Neil, it'd be a reason, it's a reasonable question, and here's what would be fair. If you could get me 10 Republicans who were willing to vote for the child tax credit, I'd say, okay, they have an argument that it's permanent. But here's what's hypocritical. You can't have the Republicans not give a single vote for these programs and in the same breath claim that they're going to be permanent. Everyone knows that's not true. I mean, do you believe, really, that if the Republicans take over, they're going to continue these programs? So I don't think they can speak from both sides of their mouth on the issue. All right, well, you raise a good point, but obviously they would be very popular and they meet resistance trying to get rid of those. So, you know, you could argue back and forth as to how easy that would be to just dispense with this. But let's say it never happens, Congressman, and this never comes to passage. Um, there are some in your party who are saying, so be it. it. It would be better to fight the fight on dealing with inflation and, and getting a handle on that, um, hoping whatever the Federal Reserve is doing will work, and that will have far more of an impact next year in the midterms than anything else. What do you say? You know, I disagree with that. I think what will have impact is if we lower prescription drug costs and we put more money in the hands of the working class and we give kids in this country preschool and lower those costs for families. But I think what, we'll, what we need to remind people of is what we've done. The American Rescue Plan, stimulus checks for everyone, the child tax credit, the infrastructure bill. For the first time, people have been talking about infrastructure we delivered. So this is obviously something we need to do with Build Back Better, but we've already had a successful year. But finally, and you and I have gotten into this before, Congressman, we didn't have any of those features, uh, you know, it, it, in, in our law prior, certainly uh, to the pandemic, when we got as low as three and a half percent unemployment. So we were doing gangbusters without any of these features then. Uh, you, you could make the argument that, that even the mere talk of this and these benefits are, are reasons enough for people maybe not to apply for jobs, maybe not to find alternatives to the government.
What do you say? You no, know, I just don't think the data bears that out and the unemployment rate is low. But I agree with you. These features, these benefits weren't there, but that's why I think working but the data class does Americans bear have had what I said, right, sir? I mean, we were at three and a half percent unemployment. I, I, I'm talking pre pandemic, you know, so yeah. we had a history going back without any of this stuff doing quite well. Well, but, uh, but we are now almost at 4%. But here's the thing, Neil. I believe the working class has had the short end of the stick for the last 40 years. I think their prescription drug costs have been too high. I think their child care costs have been too high. Their health care costs have been too high. You're right. These weren't there. They haven't been there for 40 years. It's time we start delivering for the working class. And that's what really this bill is about. All right. So you think it will come to pass, but next year? I think there is a very strong probability it comes to pass, but the way to do it is to force a vote. I don't think we should have interminable conversations. January, let's vote on it, uh, and then let's move on. That's a good point. You know, just go ahead and just attempt to vote, see where we stand, and, and you know, let the chips fall where they may. Uh, Congressman, have a wonderful holiday. Good seeing you again.